new videos every day. Life Wisdom. I'm Psyche Truth correspondent Karina Rachel. Today on the Truth Talks, we're talking about weight, health, and fitness and what it really means to have a healthy weight. So my question for you is whether or not you think that I'm fat. Because I've gotten a lot of comments on my videos that I'm fat and I need to be taking my own weight loss advice. And I just want to know what you think. I'm joined today by Joseph Strickland. He's an applied clinical nutritionist and has a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition Science. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I'm glad to be here. This is a great topic. So we are living in a world where the image that is constantly forced down our throats really <laughs> is of this really extremely skinny body type right. and all of the major models and actresses are constantly trying to lose weight. And then when they gain some weight, they'll be on the cover of some magazine making fun of them. <laughs> And I think that most people, you know, they just want to be healthy. And so it has really raised this big question of what is a healthy weight? Mm -hmm. And what does it really mean to be healthy? Well, that's a good question. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting information on that. And, and depending on who you ask, you'll get a different answer. But in my opinion, um, in working with a lot of different people and seeing a lot of different body shapes and sizes, um, I think that each person has to be comfortable in their own skin. And I've seen people that, you know, the classification, I think, technically, according to the, the medical profession, would be a BMI below 25, but above 18. Somewhere between 18 and 25 would be considered the normal um, body mass index. Um, however, there are plenty of studies that show being slightly over that in the range from 30 to 34 actually increases and um, lowers your chance of a premature death. I think it's a 5% lowering of chance for premature death if you're in that range. And, you know, if you look back historically, um, it was considered healthy to be overweight. It was a sign of health um, to be overweight. So we've got nowadays where you say healthy is, you know, being skinny. And in the past, you had healthy was being fat. So it is hard to kind of discern, well, what is healthy? And, and really, um, I define health as, you know, not having really symptoms. You know, you're not in pain. Uh, you're not, um, you know, you're able to hold down food, digest food. You're not having any digestive trouble. Um, you're happy in your own skin. You're able to be productive. Uh, and your body's not holding you back from surviving and, and living. And, and so I don't know that that falls into a BMI category. So it sounds like the cultural impression of what's healthy and what's not has really changed a lot over the years. Can you elaborate a little bit more about this kind of pretty stark change in the idea of what's healthy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as I was saying, um, Back a long time ago, you had this perception of health as being big. Now you have the perception of being skinny. But but on a shorter time frame, um, even looking at like the 50s and 60s, I think of Marilyn Monroe, you know, and uh, and certainly nobody would argue that she wasn't beautiful. She was beautiful. And, and what's interesting is that she was, uh, I don't know exactly, but a size 10 to 12, somewhere in there. And, and nowadays, our, our example of beauty would be somebody that's a size zero. You know, like Sarah Jessica Parker, who's a size zero on, on Sex in the City, you know. And um, certainly, I'd say the, the vast majority of women are not a size zero, one, or two. You know, they're probably going to be a size 10, 12, maybe even 14, somewhere in there. And so, um, but the perception is, you know, when you, when you see a Vogue or Cosmopolitan or, you know, a lot of these different magazines... And, and even TV and the whole culture of that whole industry, um, it's completely obsessed with weight. And, and so much so that, uh, you know, if somebody even gains five pounds, uh, Janet Jackson's a great example. She has struggled with having the perception of the correct weight her whole life, you know, and you see magazines, oh, she's, you know, gained 60 pounds and oh my gosh, she just lost 40. And, you know, they'll have a, an inner, they'll, they'll have an inquirer magazine when she's gained 60, you know, and then that'll sell some magazines. And then when she's lost 40 pounds, 
they'll have another magazine with how she did it, you know, and she drank, you know, water smoothies for three weeks with a little bit of, you know, um, something in there and it was a liquid diet, you know, how healthy is that? You know? <laughs> and how realistic is that? Exactly. It's not very realistic. And Oprah, Oprah is another great example. Uh, somebody who, you know, has had a lot of, uh, fitness and health people on her show over the years and, you know, has gone up and down in weight and, you know, I think um, Oprah's great at any weight, you know, but uh, but in any case, what what's healthy for one person could be different for another. Maybe just give us an idea. I think it's interesting. Maybe talk a little bit more about the research that actually being a little bit more overweight actually decreases your chance of an early death. Yeah, it, it, it's fascinating when I saw this um, because you know, so many people that come to see me, you know, they, they see the, the Vogue magazine or Cosmopolitan or uh, Playboy or whatever it is, and they say, wow, you know, I want to look like that, you know. And what people don't realize is that, you know, in many cases, though they're computer manipulated, okay? They're not just snapping a photo and there you go. They're airbrushed. They, they change features. Um, one that was really interesting that I saw a, a little while back was Jennifer Love Hewitt. She was starting in, starting in this new TV show, and they actually felt that her breasts were too big, so they actually reduced it for the photo. And you can't even tell that they reduced her breast size, you know, for this photo. So anyway, anything you see in a magazine or on TV, it's done for artistic purposes. It's not necessarily from a health perspective. And so when we're looking at health, the gauge is, you know, at what age did the person die and what was their quality of life through that that point? You know, I think a lot of people that, that are starving themselves to be skinny don't have a very good quality of life, you know. Uh, they're not necessarily happy about that, but it comes with the territory. And also know that a lot of these people that are, that are in these magazines and on TV, they're actually getting... Uh, medical procedures done, whether it be they're, you know, going in and, and, and shaving their, their cheekbones and, you know, adding things to their lips to make them bigger or tattooing eyebrows, all kinds. There's a whole industry on this mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, but in Britain, they actually, uh, this is where the study comes from. And you can just Google obesity study uh, Britain and see that, you know, Somebody with a BMI between uh, 30 and 34, which would be considered mildly obese, actually had a 5% uh, lower premature death rate than somebody in the quote-unquote normal, which is 18 to 25. So when we're looking at somebody with a BMI um, under 18, that's going to be pretty much all of your fitness models, runway models that are just ridiculously skinny. And right. You're right on uh, with uh, the Photoshop. You know, there was an article that I was reading and it was some actress and she had done a photo shoot and she actually got really upset um, because once the photo came out, she was like, those aren't my thighs. <laughs> and she actually, you know, came out publicly and said, you know what, my thighs are probably three times bigger than that. Wow. And, you know, she, uh, I think actually, you know, made a comment, you know, I, act, you know, I wish that I looked what I can't remember who it was at this time. You know, I wish that I looked like, you know, Claudia Schiffer or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was actually her saying it. And the whole kind of take home was that the images that we see in the magazines and see on the movies, oftentimes that's not really even what the person looks like. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, so maybe at the point that you are really obsessively skinny like that is unhealthy. What would be the point um, of being overweight, that it becomes unhealthy. What would be kind of the danger point that, you know, maybe at that point you say, you know what, you need to bring your weight back down? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. And, and it's one that I think ties into what I talk about a lot, which is balancing blood sugar. You know, a lot of times when people are what they would classify as morbidly obese, there's actually an endocrine issue or there's something going on with blood sugar and they're eating the foods that are not allowing their body to have the right blood sugar balance. So I think the answer to that question is how big is too big is if the person isn't having 
the health like we talked about. You know, they're having symptoms. They're they're craving certain foods. They're you know they get really irritated and moody between meals. That food is almost running their life to some degree. Uh, and I think that would be a, a symptom of something else going on. But I don't think that the weight is necessarily the issue at that point. It's actually a symptom, much like a headache would be. You know, a person doesn't have a Tylenol deficiency if they've got a headache. This is the same amount. They don't have an Aleve deficiency. You know, it, that's not the reason for the headache. So when somebody is overweight, it's not an ally deficiency, you know, or it's not um, <clears throat> some drug amphetamine. They're not, it's not that they're not getting enough amphetamines in their diet, you know. So basically, I think just look at the overall health of the person and weight is definitely a factor in that, but I don't think it's the actual problem. Right. Very interesting. So Let's maybe shift over to talking about, I guess, what we could call the fitness industry, mm -hmm. um, because we see tons of, you know, fitness magazines, fitness videos, and for me, it's become apparent that sometimes the line is maybe blurred between fitness for the sake of looking a certain way, mm -hmm. or even, as you mentioned, having plastic surgery to look a certain way, right. this idea of you know, being really fit and prioritizing fitness, you know, for esteem issues or because you think you're going to feel better versus, you know, fitness because you just want to be healthy, you know, with health as the ultimate goal. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think fitness is something that <clears throat> people are interested in it to a very little degree or a large degree. Um, I think it can, uh, it can be taken too far. Um, and a lot of times I think it can be underdone. Um, but I think the, the baseline would be at least three times a week, getting about 30 minutes of activity, whether it's walking or running, rowing, weightlifting, whatever it is that, that, that somebody's interested in, that would be kind of like the health point. Um, but I think that fitness can be used. I mean, one of the one great example that I can think of is this guy Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy's in his sixties. He looks like he's in his forties, and he's not, you know, getting muscles implanted into his body. The guy's working out, and yes, he's probably using some different growth hormones and things like that. But obviously, whoever's working with him is working with his regime, and he's actually, you know getting some benefit from that. Um, do I think everybody needs to look like Sylvester Stallone? No. But in his case, it has worked as an anti-aging um, component. And so certainly somebody can use fitness for a certain health goal or to look or, you know, be a certain way. But is Sylvester Stallone's uh, regimen necessary for everybody? No. I think that, uh, you know, we'll see what time he, you know, lives till. Uh, another good example, somebody that did live a really long life that was really into fitness is Jack LaLanne. He was in his 90s, you know, and he woke up every morning at 5 a.m. and lifted weights and was really into fitness and had a TV show back in the 50s. And so certainly there is evidence of fitness adding to health, but then you've got the flip side of these, you know, mega wrestlers that, that die of an enlarged heart in their forties, right. you know, so fitness can definitely be taken too far. And there are also a lot of, um, chemical like steroids and things like that that people can get into, which is like the dark side of fitness, you know? And so I think it can be used both in a good way, obviously, with Sylvester Stallone, um, and then, you know, um, somebody like, uh, oh, the names escape me right now, but there, I certainly see a, an article every few weeks of a, of a wrestler in the 80s that, I, you know, when I was a kid, I used to like. So um, fitness does tie into health at, at various points, but I think it can be used um, to increase health or decrease health. It can be used, you know, if you exercise, certainly with no nutrition to back it up, your joints aren't going to be able to repair from that heavy work. So it is, fitness is a stressor on the body and it's something that the body has to repair from. So it's important to, you know, make sure you have adequate nutrition, you know, when you are engaging in a lot of fitness. Uh, and I think that that's, there's sometimes a disconnect there.
I think it's really interesting that you bring up Jack LaLanne because you're right. It wasn't just fitness. It was also this really big emphasis on nutrition. Mm. And maybe that's kind of the take home message of this video is that it's not about becoming overly fixated on just the way your body looks or something like that, but really incorporating, you know, a good diet and staying active and this difference of prioritizing your health and how you're feeling more so than the way that your body looks compared to supermodels, especially in a country where, you know, seven out of 10 people are, are overweight or obese. A lot of people are really struggling because right. we have shape magazine and all these different magazines that, you know, are putting themselves across like they're about health and they're about wellness, but really the images being conveyed really aren't that healthy. Exactly. That's a great point. And yeah, Jack Lane always had an emphasis on nutrition. And, um, <clears throat> you know, he would talk about juicing. There's the Jack Lane juicer, you know. And so he really had the right idea of, look, you've got to put the right stuff in, move the body around so it can take that stuff and use it. Um, and uh, that's really helpful for people. And, you know, the other thing that's also interesting about Jack Lane is back in the 1950s uh, when he was on TV and things like that, um, women were at home traditionally and, and oftentimes, you know, busting their butt to, you know, keep a home and, and that sort of thing. And that was a lot of work, you know, and they were hand uh, washing clothes, hand washing every dish, dishwashers and, and washers were not very common. And uh, so this concept of exercise was kind of foreign. It wasn't really until we started to have dishwashers and, and, and a lot of these mechanical appliances that did a lot of the work, right. you know, and now we've got even the, the vacuum cleaners that you don't have to vacuum anymore. It's just, you put it on the ground and it does it for you, you know? Right. And so the increase in activity, Jack LaLanne kind of saw that. Look, people are decreasing what they're doing at the office uh, or they're going to the office and they're decreasing what they're doing at the home. They're not having to go out and hunt, uh, you know, for food where we're in these communities where things are kind of being done for us. And, and really we need to have a focus on, on what we're feeding people. Cause also at that time you started to have TV dinners, people started to eat less at home. McDonald's was getting big, you know, so he really, he really saw kind of, uh, it was a pioneer. He really saw what was going to happen and he really ha had a, had a good solid, uh, grounding in that. So do you have any maybe closing recommendations for people uh, about maybe integrating more fitness into their diet or just in general maybe becoming more comfortable with the way they look so that they can actually prioritize their health as the real issue? Well I think the, 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 the best thing to do is to, to start small. You know don't look at a, at a supermodel and say oh my gosh she's 125 pounds I'm 200, I need to be 125 pounds. Instead say, well, you know, I'm 200, let me be 180, you know, let me be 190. And then, you know, looking at that and saying, okay, well, what do I need to get there? I'm not exercising at all, so I'm gonna add in five minutes of activity a day. Maybe that means that when you go to the grocery store, you park at the very last thing and then walk to the grocery store. That's something that you can do. Whether it's maybe walking around the block um, or something like that. You don't necessarily have to rush out and get a gym membership. Um, just start small, you know, add in a little bit of activity until you get to about 30 minutes, uh, three times a week. And then once you're doing that and you're, you know, taking out some of the, the foods that, that are not towards health, um, I think you'll start hitting some of those goals and, you know, and be in, in a better range. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to visit nutritionaustin.com if you would like to learn more about Joseph Strickland. And click the like button on our video. Be sure to subscribe and join us again next time on The Truth Talks. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.